Hey, well, the smartphone wars got a little hotter today. AT&T agreed to pay Qualcomm nearly $2 billion for a chunk of wireless spectrum space. It will give AT&T access to 300 million people in the United States, almost everyone in the country. But is it enough to make frustrated iPhone users happy and catch up with Verizon? And could some other 4G networks sneak up and steal the show in 2011? Let's put those questions to Gleacher analyst Mark McKechnie, who joins us live from San Francisco. So, hey, Mark, first of all, I'm thinking AT&T Verizon, re the iPhone. What does this mean? Well, you know, Verizon uh, made a pretty bold move. They launched their 4G LTE network uh, early December. I actually tested it out. I mean, that network is impressive. And uh, I think it does prepare Verizon for the onslaught of data that will come inevitably when the, uh, the iPhone gets to Verizon. So, you know, I do think uh, Verizon's got a nice lead. They're managing the, the network traffic well. And uh, I think AT&T is going to need to, um, you know, play catch up. And uh, I think, you know, like you pointed out, this, uh, the spectrum they bought in the 700 megahertz band uh, is a good step. It's just a good step. How much does it help it catch up, though, with what Verizon's doing? Or is it still a far way off? I think it's a ways off. I mean, you know, AT&T does have some tricks up their sleeve. They've got uh, a pretty broad network that's been stressed very heavily by the iPhone. Um, they can upgrade that to faster speeds, HSPA going to HSPA plus. Uh, they can add some more capacity. Um, but, uh, you know, meanwhile, the, uh, the Verizon network uh, is, uh, has got some space. So I think Verizon's probably a good 9 to 12 months ahead of AT&T on, uh, on the 4G LTE side. You know, our uh, tech columnist, Rich Jaroslawski, out there in San friend tried out the 4G network as well and was amazed by it. Um, but there's one bonus or benefit that that network has that the others don't is that no one's using it right now. I mean, if you had an influx of iPhone users uh, Googling everything all day long uh, and downloading movies and sending songs, I mean, would that stop up the network the same way that we've seen AT&T's network get crowded up? I think that's a good point. I look at it as uh, fresh powder, right? This, uh, this LTE network, I tried it out. I got my little Pantech data card and I plugged in my computer. I got 29 megabits a second downstream, super good latency. Um, I, you know, I think as uh, what's going to happen, I think uh, Verizon is going to take some of the real heavy users, uh, maybe 5% of their subscriber base right now are guys that uh, access the network uh, with their notebook, uh, maybe 5% of their uh, users and probably 20% of the overall traffic. They're going to shift those guys up to LTE, uh, and I think that will create some room for them on the EBDO side. But, um, you know, when, when the iPhone uh, onslaught comes, uh, you know, uh, Verizon's going to feel it. What, what is that going to be? I mean, when does Verizon get the iPhone and, and uh, what do you see happening as far as customer migration from AT&T to Verizon? Uh, you know, it's, it's a good guess. No one really knows till it, till it happens, but uh, we're guessing uh, first quarter of uh, next year. Um, you know, and, and you can tell by the way the carriers are acting. Uh, you know, even Motorola, you know, kind of warned that uh, their first quarter would feel the impact uh, from Verizon. You're seeing AT&T bring on a lot of different smartphone vendors, uh, including Windows Phone 7. Uh, they're promoting the, uh, the BlackBerry Torch pretty hard. So, you know, the whole industry is clearly gearing up for that. How, how much, by the way, you know, in the context of uh, I iPhone users sopping up all, all the market uh, all the uh, network bandwidth. How much does it help to have iPhone subscribers as your customer base? I mean, do you lose money on iPhone subscribers? Yeah, so I don't cover AT&T. You know, I think they are making money on it. I mean, there's a pretty hefty subsidy uh, with, with that phone, but I, I do think it was uh, positive for them. And uh, in fairness to AT&T, you know, they were on the bleeding edge. I mean, when the iPhone came to their network, what was it, uh, a few years ago, uh, you know, no one, no one knew how to deal with that. So the equipment vendors, Ericsson and crew, had to, had to scurry to, uh, to, to improve the network. And so they've been playing catch-up ever since. Um, you know, I think as Verizon gets it, uh, there'll be a few surprises as well. Hey, Mark, we're talking a lot about Verizon and AT&T, understandably. So anybody else, though, that some other 4G networks could kind of come in, steal the show from both Verizon and AT&T? Uh, you know, those are the big players, right? I mean, you've got Sprint, who's, uh, who's got um, their WiMAX network, they're calling it 4G. It's really 3.5G. You know, I think uh, they've got a pretty fast network uh, now. Um, uh, their roadmap's going to have to uh, move towards uh, LTE as you move forward. And then, um, you know, Timo, smaller player, so, so, so uh, you know, not really scale. I, th I think it's going to be a, a battle amongst the biggies, uh, uh, you know, AT&T versus uh, Verizon here in the U.S. You know, I'm looking at both of the stocks, though, AT&T and Qualcomm today. Not much reaction. I know Qualcomm's had a great run um, 
since the summer. Um, is that surprising or not surprising? I mean, not a, not terribly surprising. I mean, you, you know, Qualcomm's going to, uh, by selling this, uh, this Spectrum, they're getting, you know, close to $2 billion. It, uh, after the uh, the expenses they have to take for shutting down media flow, it works mm. out to about a buck a share. Um, you know, Qualcomm probably, um, you know, um, work more on, um, uh, you know, just overall fundamentals. Uh, balance sheet change isn't going to change the valuation of Qualcomm terribly. Mark, Mark, is anybody else sitting on packets of awesome Spectrum like this? I mean, this is the good stuff, right? It goes through walls. It's what you want. Yeah, right. So, uh, you know, AT&T uh, now has seven mega, 700 megahertz, uh, Verizon with 700. Um, uh, and what's great about it is, uh, you know, not only, like you said, it goes through walls, um, it carries pretty far. So when you first build out your network, you get you know, pretty good coverage. And then, you know, as the capacity fills up, they're going to be able to put base stations closer and closer together. I mean, at a certain point, it runs out. And, and um, uh, I think one of the things that we didn't talk about is... Um, the carriers are starting to offer um, tiered pricing, right? Mm. Uh, so one way to one way to deal with that is, um, you know, uh, charge people uh, by the uh, by the megabyte or by the gigabyte, and so uh, I think that can you know offset some of the uh, the onslaught. It's the end of the free ride for us, Carol. Uh oh. The end of our free lunch. I hate when that happens. Mark, thank you so much for joining us. Mark McKechnie there from Gleacher and Company.